Hi, my name is David Patari, representing the Mitigating Unauthorized Scraping Alliance, or MUSA. Welcome to our talk about cyber threat intelligence applied to scraping mitigation, where we will delve into the world of cyber threat intelligence, or CTI, and its practical application in scraping mitigation. In this webinar, we'll explore how organizations can leverage cyber threat intelligence to fortify their defenses against scraping threats. Our speaker today is an expert from OWN, and we'll address key questions to help you understand the significance of cyber threat intelligence in today's security landscape. First, Morgan, thank you so much for being here today. Can you provide a brief introduction to OWN and its role in the cybersecurity domain? Uh, hello, uh, David. Good evening. My name is Morgan. First, thanks for the invitation. So OWN is a cybersecurity company uh, based in Paris, but we have clients uh, all over the world and we work with uh, small businesses, uh, middle-sized businesses, administrations. Uh, we do pure cybersecurity. It means uh, what we do is uh, audit, consulting, uh, threat intelligence, CERT and SOC. So it's easy. CERT is the computer emergency response team. It's people, you know, who you call when you have been infected. Uh, and SOC is people who are trying to protect you. And we have 60 consultants. Uh, we speak almost nine languages. So, and I worked there as a CTI analyst. Uh, in the past, I used to be uh, a translator or CTI analyst in the army where I worked on a variety of subjects. And now I work in CTI mainly uh, fighting scraping. And that's a great segue to, you know, from your perspective, what, what is scraping and why is it a problem for companies? So let's start, you know, with what the professionals say. Uh, OWASP, so it's the Open Worldwide Application Security Project, so the foundation, uh, they define scraping as an automated threat uh, classified as abuse of functionality. So what's important is automated and abuse of functionality. So scraping, basically, when you are uh, using your phone on a social network, you know, you are looking at a profile, you're sending a request, you know, to have some data. So what the scrapers do is they abuse this functionality. They send a lot of requests and they do it in an automated way. So that's why scraping is not breaching. It's not intrusion. We understand that sometimes because it's, it can be considered as, you know, data stealing, uh, that people think, oh, it's hacking, it's intrusion. It's not intrusion. It's they take a normal function and they multiply it. So they will do a request and multiply it a thousand times in an automated way. And it's a big problem uh, for many reasons. Uh, it can be a problem because uh, of technology. It's going to overload servers. Uh, it's going to uh, downgrade the experience of users. And of course, uh, it's a problem for legal and compliance reasons. And as uh, the one of the problems is that it's cliche, but it's true. Everything is online. More and more services are, are online. So uh, there is more and more data available. So of course, more data means more opportunities to scrape and steal this data. And so just to make sure we're all on the same page, you know, and, and a, that was that's an excellent summary. Um, you know, the way I think about it, just to make it accessible for people who maybe are not as familiar with it, or maybe are coming from the business side. So if, if I'm thinking about like a wedding, and I think about breach versus scraping. And I think about somebody who's maybe abusing being at the wedding or at the venue. So somebody comes in and they're like, you know, they're invited to the wedding, but they're eating all the wedding cake or they're taking the presents versus somebody who is not invited and just crashes the wedding. Is that is that a way to think about the it's more of like an abuse of the service versus an intrusion, or is um, am I am I getting it a little a uh, little different? No, no, it's a it's a very good analogy because you know it's like if you do this at a wedding, it's not illegal. It's just that it's abuse. So in this way, they are not hacking or breaching inside. They are doing and um, taking a normal function and repeating it on a very large scale. So it's a very good analogy. It's abuse. Abuse that that makes a lot of sense. And so why do, you know, what is the what is the upside for people scraping? What are they doing with this data? Why are they even doing this to begin with? Like, can you talk to that a little bit at a high level? Yes, of course. So usually in cybersecurity, uh, you, maybe you heard about it. It's We tend to categorize uh, like bad guys, actors, we call them threat actors, by commonalities. So 
for scraping, uh, you have two things. You have actors and you have data. And for example, uh, if you are uh, if you are a booking website for hotels, there can there can be many things. A competitor can scrape your data, but if you are a social network, uh, then it's another actor. It can be competitors that scrape your data. Uh, commercial entities who are gonna, for example, uh, steal your extract your data to do analysis, or you can have even criminals. Criminals. Uh, scrape data and use this data to scam people, for example. Or uh, even the more elusive uh, state nation actors, you know, in some very, very narrow uh, cases, data can be used for anything. So you have a lot of different actors that can make money or some of them use it uh, to rebound and do something else. So, so in summary, it seems like there could be uh, nation states that are acting as um, adverse actors trying to scrape data. There could be competitors. There could be uh, criminal action actors that are trying to build profiles or take advantage of information like when you're home, when you're not home, that kind of thing to, to determine whether they break into your house. So that's kind of the universe. And have you seen scraping increasing lately or decreasing what's your just general feel about um you know what you've seen out in the wild so from what we see it's increasing and it's decreasing widely because i mean widely no but it keeps on increasing because uh when you have data 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 is a possibility it's a possibility for unfortunately criminal actions but it's a possibility for business it's a possibility for uh, good things and bad things for illegal things are just you know a business a business opportunity so as more and more services go online as more people go online you know it's mathematical more people online more data more services more opportunities and just at a high level i've heard some people sometimes people get confused between scraping versus api data access and so what 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 do you think are the differences? My understanding is like scraping is okay, it's not an API, it's not a formal protocol or or um program that somebody can pass data between two entities. That scraping is using what the user uses to uh to access the site and then via an automated way or something it's pulling down the data off of the site and storing it somewhere for for a different use. Is that your understanding or is that the understanding of people in the cybersecurity uh, area of, of, you know, the difference between, say, API access versus uh, just web scraping in general? Yeah, no. Uh, for us, because usually you have the website, but in the back, in the back end, you have the what we call an endpoint. That's why it's important that we talk about it. Uh, because usually the users only see, you know, you see the website. So if you are on a social network, you click on your friend's profile and the photos pop up. But actually, behind, there is something called an endpoint. What's an endpoint? It's an access point. So when you do scraping, you can do you can pretend uh, to be a user and use the website, or you can use the endpoint in the back. So mm -hmm. it's more technical. And uh, when you talk with the endpoint, you use what they call an API. API is Application Programming Interface. So yeah. it means if you are script looking at uh, the profile of your friend, you send you know the name of your friend and with the language API and the endpoint send you back. So, but for us in cybersecurity, uh, sc scraping is something uh, general, and you can scrape a website or the endpoint behind it. So that's the way we see it. Scraping is a is uh it's a lot of different things but usually it's automated extraction of data so it can be from the website directly or from the endpoint just to well for example when you're using an app you don't see it but your app is talking with the endpoint you, you're not on website you're on an app but there is a you know there is a discussion between the server and you and it's using the endpoint so endpoint is a web scraping is scraping the web but scraping in general automated extraction it could be uh, the web, or it could be endpoint. Excellent, excellent. That's a, that's a helpful clarification. So now um, moving on, let's talk about you. You brought some slides today to kind of help us understand, uh, you know, web scraping from your perspective. Let's go through those. Um, and I see the the first slide we have here is just uh, talking about own. 
And uh, yeah, exactly. just walk us through, walk us through your slides. Uh, so, you know, to help the audience understand uh, this topic a little better. Yeah, uh, so we already talked about on. So uh, there is something uh, we wanted to talk today. Uh, it's something we use at on to talk about scraping. So uh, to start from the beginning, uh, in the military, uh, they use something called the kill chain. The kill chain is a technique to describe what is an attack, you know, uh, preparation, uh, then the attack, and then the consequences. What happened uh, 20 years ago is the uh, Lockheed Martin, the aerospace defense company, uh, used, uh, adapted the kill chain to the cyber kill chain. So the cyber kill chain, which is used in cybersecurity, it describes an intrusion into a network. So it's six or seven steps that describe what it is to have an intrusion. And what's good about the kill chain is that when you describe all the steps, you understand better the subject and uh, it's better for communication. So that's why uh, today we decided to show you uh, what we use uh, inside our company. And uh, we are going to write a white paper about this. So it's a proposition. You're welcome to you know, uh, make remarks, criticize it. And yeah, it's important that we agree on what is scrapping and what are the steps. This way we can we can fight it in a more efficient way. Uh, yeah, so inside your company, uh, let's say outside, you know, when you communicate uh, with other entities that are implied in fighting against scrapping. So just a little disclaimer. Uh, today we brought a few examples, uh, but everything has been anonymized because uh, it's we brought only real examples. But we, we know there are a lot of lawyers and there is an extradition treaty, treaty between France and USA. So everything has been <laughs> anonymized. Okay, so let's just go through the, the kill chain. So first, pre-scraping, uh, active scraping and post-scraping. Nothing new. Uh, let's go to the steps. So let's see, let's uh, imagine I'm a company, let's call it BBB, and there is somebody trying to scrape me. Uh, how does it work? So the first step is target selection. Basically, they're going to, if uh, there is a commercial demand, they're going to choose my company, BBB. Okay. And then, very important, analysis and planning. Let's say there is demand to scrape pictures. So they're going to go to my website, BBB, and they're going to look how it works. They're going to look at all the details, technical details, where are the pictures, how to add them. Remember, it's automated and uh, on a big scale. They're going to check how they can repeat it. And the next step, very important, is tool pre tooling preparation. Because, okay, you know where is the data, but you need the tools to, uh, to bypass the security, to extract the data, to save the data. So then we come to the, to the, main, uh, the, main, uh, the main subject, it's active scraping. And most of the fights uh, that's going on is in the access uh, step. So what does it mean, access? Access means to have access you know, to the resource you're, you're, you're asking. So if you are on a BBB, let's imagine I'm a social network, let's imagine you are clicking on your friend's profile, okay? And to ask to see his pictures. So BBB receives, uh, receives a request. But the problem is, you know, uh, how do I know if it's a normal user? Uh, how do I know if it's a scraper? So. There is, maybe you heard about it, there is a, a fight going on. It's called uh, between botting and anti-botting. So usually what we call scrapers, bots, like robots, because they do it on an automated way. So the problem is for a big company, uh, like a social network, BBB, is that yeah. how do you make the difference between real people and between robots? So it's very technical. There are a lot of steps, but it's the core of the problem. So usually most companies, uh, they have an in-house solution or they, they have other solution. Maybe you heard about Cloudflare turn style or shape or uh, stuff like this. But basically, that's why you've all been through this. You click on the link and what do you have? You know, you have a captcha. And mm -hmm. you have a captcha, it means that you have, you know, you have to click on fire hydrants to prove that you are not the Terminator. And um, so but it's where the main... Sorry, Let's look at how 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 my understanding is captchas can be defeated pretty easily today with Gen AI and um, just that general AI programs and stuff. How effective are captchas today in 
um, fighting, scraping, or have they lost some effectiveness now with this amazing new uh, technology that's come out just in the past year and has become ubiquitous, uh, where almost anybody can download a very competent um, AI uh, program platform to, uh, to um, you know, defeat captures? Exactly. It's a very good question because what we see, just like uh, in a lot of fields, the technology, it's a race. So there was there were captures. Now the uh, Gen AI are very good. So now you see more and more advanced captures. You see more and more advanced captures, and you see more and more uh, what we call uh, uh, behavior analysis. Because uh, they really, when you are using a website, they're gonna look how you navigate the website, how you move your mouse. They're gonna look at everything to make sure you're a robot. So. Even the captures are changing. If you see, there are more and more captures that are extremely complicated uh, to defeat uh, Gen AI. But one of the problems, uh, it's a subject I wanted to, it's very important to, to talk about, is that security is a dial. So as you see, uh, we've, we've all been through, cap through captures. And you know what is the worst thing when you're a user? And it's when you have multiple captures. So, Security is a dial. If you do a very easy captcha, everybody can defeat it. But if you do a very hard captcha, okay, maybe you will beat the robots, but maybe you will you will lose part of your audience. Maybe you will lose uh, income. So that's why uh, that's why also uh, we created this to understand that the access is very important, but it's not everything. It's a very very important, but it's not everything. So yeah, we, what we, we see. Would... Yeah, we, call friction, we call it friction. And, uh, you know, generally, uh, when you're trying to work with users, you're trying to create a frictionless experience so they want to come back or use your site. And I guess that brings me to another question. You said it's very difficult for companies to determine or it's it's challenging to dis dis distinguish between a real user and somebody that's scraping because the scraping has gotten sophisticated. Uh, but, you know, thinking about it then, if you're going to lock down and prevent scraping, doesn't that make a high friction or very bad user experience? And how do the two interplay from your experience? You mentioned security is a dial, but um, it seems that with more, um, you know, depending on how a website is set up, they may go too far and you may have no scraping, but you would have a site that's virtually unusable by the users. Is that is that kind of correct or that's where that would go? Exactly. So... Usually what you see, it's interesting, is what you see is in the time you see deltas because companies try to adjust. So sometimes you can see that they go too hard and then they realize that they are losing customers. So then they go a little bit. So, you know, it's always how change works. So they go very hard, they lose clients, then they, you know, they turn the dial to less security, but it's exactly like this. Yeah, and just one other quick question on the pre-scraping phase. You mentioned that you know the target will be selected and and they'll be identified. I guess one quick question before we kind of talk about get to the data extraction piece is: um, do, does do people who scrape typically um, what do they say when they see a, a in the terms of service or privacy policy that says, "Hey, please don't uh, you know we don't allow scraping on our websites." Does that stop any of the bad actors or prevent them from scraping or does it give them pause or what's your experience on that from that, you know, on, on, mm -hmm. on uh, notices or that kind of thing? From what we saw, uh, they are very, the big scrapers are very well versed, uh, versed in uh, law and they follow most of the cases. So they always try to respect, but they know that uh, the recent decisions that say that everything that's public uh, can be scraped. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I'm not taking any one side. It's just that they are very careful and they follow the law. So the the, the big scrapers, they do read the notices and they try uh, to minimize the risk because it's a business. So they do the big, big ones. They try to minimize the risk. It's what we see. And then getting to um, ro like things like robots.txt and stuff. How um, how effective are robots.txt? Uh, you know, are they honored by scrapers or not honored? Or what's your experience from a more technical level of saying, "Hey, please don't crawl our site with bots." Um, you know, are, are those honored? Uh, they are not in the sense that they will do their best to look like a normal user. 
uh, they bypass a lot of things. It's a hard question because uh, we are we follow the scraping communities and there is a lot of talk uh, every day and most of them will publicly declare they follow everything, but then you find out that in reality they don't follow it. Uh, the one thing they try to do is to respect, uh, like, fair, to be fair. They are trying not to overload the servers from the technical point of view. But uh, unfortunately, they don't always follow um, legal recommendations. They know they exist, they read them. Uh, they will say, of course, publicly, they respect robots.txt, but the reality is they don't always respect them. So that's that's a that's a helpful um you know insight to for the audience today. Um that you know, although the public statements say they follow robots uh, text, the reality or the practicality is a lot of uh entities involved in scraping do not. Um so now getting to I guess we we're talked about access. And now what about uh the data extraction piece of action active scraping? Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so data extraction actually is very short. There is not much to say, it's just once you have access to the data, you know, it's over. I mean, you just download the things and there is not much to say. So once you have, you pass the security, it's okay, you can download. So not much to say about this. And that brings me to the next step. Uh, and it's the post scraping. So the next two steps are data storage. Uh, data storage sounds maybe a bit technical, but it's a problem when you scrape a lot, you have to store thousands, millions of pictures, uh, you have to store millions of lines of text. So it's mostly about databases. And the most important thing uh, in the end is data dissemination. So what does it mean? It means once you have the data, what do you do with it? Usually either it's internal. So if you're a criminal organization, you're going to use it inside. Or if you are doing marketing, or if you are a scraping company, you have to sell the data. So mm -hmm. one Two little things I wanted to add. Uh, today we talk about mitigation. What, that's why for us it's important to talk about the kill chain because usually we have technical mitigation. So it's when your cybersecurity team will implement changes to, to limit scraping. Or you have uh, legal mitigation. It's when the legal departments uh, get involved and you know they're going to send cease and disease letters. So as you see, technical mitigation, we can do it uh, in tools uh, or in access. Even in tools, because if you study the tools, then you are you get better. You get better uh, to protect access. And legal mitigation is very important and can be uh, in tools. You can you know you can say something about the tools uh, being sold, being used uh, in access, because in access you can detect sometimes. Uh, where the where the scraping comes from, or from dissemination, you know how they, you know, who is selling your data, and actually, uh, even there's something. Uh, there, now there are it's the what another byproduct of scraping. It's data brokers. It's people who are gonna scrape a lot of data and gonna sell blocks of data. So it's a little bit out of subject, but it's a byproduct. And when you said the tools, you mean the tools that are that are used by various actors to execute and to scrape with these uh, automated bots or or um, whatever they're using or you know uh, taking advantage of public APIs. Um, so that that's kind of what you mean when you say tools, right? Exactly. When I mean tools, usually you have tools, what we call script kiddies. It's very simple tools uh, that's written in a programming language for 10 lines. And then you have, there are some very, very big tools uh, for scraping on a very, very big scale. So for like for every field, there is a lot of technical tools. There are free tools, uh, there are pay, paid tools. Oh, so, so in other words, there's a market for tools, there's paid tools, and then you said there's free tools. Where would somebody, I mean, not to not to help people find it, but in other words, these seem pretty available with a simple uh, web search or something. Is that is that accurate? To you know, and anyone can become a scraper very quickly and um, and um, uh, grab sites. Are these hard to find? No, it's very it's very easy. If you are what we call uh, enthusiasts, uh, if you are a script kiddie, you can go to GitHub. Uh, it's a very famous website, and I don't think you will be able to scrape a lot. But the problem is even if you don't scrape a lot, but if thousands and millions of people 
scrape just a little bit, then you know it's it's already a technical problem, it's already a legal problem because they are extracting your data without your authorization, without accepting the term of services. So that's why sometimes, you know, how did they say it? it's a small rivers that you know go to make big I don't, sorry, I don't remember. No, no, that makes but, sense. That's that's very helpful. And then on the data dissemination piece, that's um so there's a market for the data. And I guess as an end user, say I realize that my data is in um, a package that's scraped, what rights do I have or how can I tell a scraper to delete my data or access any of the rights I have under the GDPR or uh, other privacy regulations like uh, California CCPA? Is there any, any rights to do that if they have my personal information or any way to do that right now? So most of it's... Uh, it depends on where you are located. It depends on where the company uh, is located. So I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to take any uh, any stand. Uh, I know that most of the, uh, usually, most of the website are supposed to comply if you ask for data to be removed. But I know it, it depends. And one of the things uh, I want to say is that usually there is, uh, depending on the country, there are a lot of different laws. So yeah. maybe maybe scraping is like authorized because the page is public. But if you scrape uh, person, what we call PII, yeah. uh, personal information, uh, uh, your personal user information, then uh, it's protected, you know, because it's personal information. So maybe leg like legally they could scrape something that's public, but then you have a different privacy law that applies. So it depends on where you are located. I guess the challenge is, is that how would you know the party that's scraped um, to your point, if it's hard to even determine if they're a user or not, and then for an end user, well, my data could be somewhere else where I don't even expect it to be. And so how about even know to ask that particular company to delete or to correct or something else? Um, so that's another challenge we can talk about more, but um, is there anything else you wanted to cover with the kill chain? I think it's a great way to think about this issue, uh, pre-scraping, active scraping and post-scraping and a way to examine at each step where you can have mitigations or where you can um where vulnerabilities are exploited by um bad actors who are scraping no it's it's all i wanted to say great great so did you have another slide or do you want to go to the next yes yeah, sorry no no i i have so uh i have another slide uh well so uh, i went a little too fast but today i wanted to talk about how we use what we call uh, what we call CTI uh, to fight against uh, scraping. So uh, sorry, let me check uh, because we use at own CTI to fight against scraping. So what is CTI? CTI is cyber threat intelligence. If you've been in law enforcement or intelligence, you know it's it's a, something very common. You know you gather data, uh, you sort it, you analyze it, and then you take decisions. So what we do is we do CTI uh, for scraping. So why do we do this? Because it's proactive. You know the normal way. There is a data leak somewhere, and then uh, you know you receive an angry email from your superior, and then you know the hunt begins. What happened? You have to check with legal, with technical to understand. There was a leak. It came from scraping, but who scrape? Then you have to you know it's time consuming and. The goal of CTI is to be proactive because what you're going to do is you're going to try to find who is scraping, uh, how they are scraping, why they, why they are scraping. So for a company, what is the goal you know, of CTI? To identify what we call threat actors. As I told you, it can be criminals, it can be other companies. Uh, to understand how they work, very important. A strategy, uh, their tools and their actions. Because then you can do technical and legal mit mitigation. And very important, I wanted to add, is sharing. That's why, uh, you know, we are all in an alliance. Uh, you know, if you find something, you know, maybe we could share to each other uh, what we find. Because, you know, we find things for clients, but most of the times uh, the, the tools can be used for different things. So I'm just going to go uh, over a few steps. So I'm going to go over the, what we call the cyber threat intelligence cycle. It's just six steps. And every time I will show examples. So the first step uh, uh, of CTI, of course, is uh, to find the goal. You know, to, what is the goal? The goal is to protect. Okay. 
the goal is to find uh, for your client who are the scrapers, okay? Well, how they do it and the motivation and what do they want from you, you know? What data do they want? And in the middle, what can you do to stop them? So uh, if you look, uh, I show I took a few examples. So I put a nice picture. Uh, it's from what we call a scraping farm because actually, technically, uh, it's very uh, easy <laughs> to scrape uh, using uh, mobile phones because they have a, a fingerprint that's very hard to detect. So on the left, you see, it's a real message from a Russian criminal forum. And actually, it's a, it's a real message where people are trying to scrape what we call BBB, okay, uh, a social yeah. network. It, Sorry, just wrong. Wrong. The, the image you're, you're discussing, is this one in the middle of the slide where you see, exactly. it looks like there's hundreds of those are little cell phones. And so you're saying that these entities are using cell phones to, in I guess, a massive network to uh, execute and to look like end users. Exactly, exactly. Wow. Because from a te technical point of view, uh, the mobile phones uh, all look the same. Uh, it's a technical uh, detail, but they, it's very hard to when people are using a people are using a cell phone. It's very hard to detect if they are a robot or not. And is this a one-off, or is this a common way that these? Uh, no, it's there is a huge business. You would not believe it. It's actually, uh, actually, you can find in so in countries where uh, mobile subscriptions uh, are low, you can uh, uh, from the people we track, uh, you know, you can go there with five thousand dollars and open a farm that's with maybe two hundred funds. You know, it's something, it's not extremely complicated to do. It's not extremely complicated to do. Wow. Okay. So this is a very common thing. And it's uh, it's something that somebody can uh, go and purchase access to. Um, and just to help companies understand what they're up against. Uh, because this looks like a very sophisticated, you know, I mean, it's unusual. But uh, it's it, it's made to look like users are, scrape, are, are accessing the site. But it's actually, uh, the information being pulled is actually for scraping. Exactly. And it's, uh, you know, sometimes it may look a little messy, but it's it works very well. It works very well. And it's a business. So, you know, the um, what the income compared to what they spend is very good. So that's why scripting, like everything, is a lot about money. That's so right. uh, I'm just uh, on the left. You can see it's criminals and they want to scrape a, a social network. And they want the name of the people and the city. So you can see how they target people. And they want to scrape everybody. And one last thing, uh, if you look on the right, so there is a graph. Uh, it's for a company called BVB. And basically, what we did is we did market analysis. Like, OK, your company has data. How do you know what people want? So we just did market analysis, search engine optimization. You can look uh, when people look for your company, BVB. Uh, scraping, what is the next word that is the most searched, okay? So for this company, you can see that comments, followers, and emails are the most, you know, the most searched thing on a search engine. So it means it's the most at risk. So, so this type of cyber threat intelligence, this is a kind of the first step that a company would go through with somebody like a team like yours or uh, to understand what's going on and what... And what the threat actor, what the individual, what the group is trying to get from their company's website, their company's public APIs, is that is that kind of an accurate way? Like, in other words, this is the first step to even uh, and, and and to to understand what they're trying to get to. Exactly, it's the first step because, like everything, uh, it's a problem. So first, you have to understand uh, it's scraping. You know, who are the people and what do they want? And then you can delve, you know, you can delve into the detail. But first, the first thing you have to understand is who, are, who is after you and what, you know, what do they want? So it's the first step and it's the kind of thing we do. That's great. And that seems to be, um, you know, for understanding any threat actor, probably a, a first step, but especially in the scraping context. Okay, let me show you the next. Uh, so the next step uh, is is to uh, what we call uh, collection, collection of data from sources. So as I told you, the most important thing usually is access. You know, people are accessing your servers. So 
the, the first thing you're going to think about is, okay, let's look at all the connections. So it's what we call a technical sources, technical information. So you're going to have like a list, like all of the connections, and you're going to look at this. But actually, what's very interesting is that you have a lot of different sources because uh, anything can be a source. You can, uh, we do market tracking, for example, you can look at the tools. Who is making the tools? How the tools are changing? How the price of the tools are changing? Uh, what we do is OSINT. You know, OSINT is open source intelligence and it's publicly available information. So we, we track which the companies, we can, which companies uh, are scraping, what data they are, you know, selling at which price. And we can even check sometimes uh, what's exposed uh, their infrastructure. We can look at the job openings they have. We look at everything. And one thing, this is a nice example I'll show you, is that uh, we look for social, like online exchange places, basically chats. So on this example, you see it's a drama in three acts. So we, we were looking for you know good information and we found one place where all the people working in big scraping companies, they, they go in one place where they chat. And mm -hmm. you can see, the problems they have. So if you look at this um, at this uh, slide, at the top, somebody is, wants to scrape BBB. He asks for help. And you look at the second slide, at the second uh, picture. OK, the, it's the guy. The user actually is a very talented. And he explains, no problem. You want to scrape BBB? You can do it with no limits if you do like this. So it basically, he gives technical tips on how to scrape BBB without no problems. Yeah. And the drama is at the end because, of course, they they stopped. They corrected the mistake. So you see how following, you know, you think, oh, it's just, you know, people chatting. But actually, it's the employees of scrapping companies and they are spilling the beans. If I can, if I can say that. so. That's shocking. That's so available. And I guess, how did how did OWN develop their own CTI? Or how is this just hard one knowledge or where to look and... And like a company thinking of doing this, what is the hurdles, uh, or is it just easier to go with somebody like yourself? And no, it depends. It depends. Uh, the thing is, we have experience in cybersecurity, and CTI is a pro process. We we have a like we have a team with a lot of different people uh, with a lot of different backgrounds in you know intelligence, uh, cybersecurity. So. Well, you can do it yourself, the CTI, but you can come to us. So it's a, but it's a process, and we have people who are used to do this kind of things. So and it takes time. I show you the, you know, it's a presentation. I show you the nice things, but you know, we have to sift through a lot, a lot of stuff before finding relevant information. It takes time. It's like police work because you're gonna see a lot of things before finding something interesting. That's right. And it seems to be a, a very, to your point, a very resource intensive uh, effort. So I guess the takeaways, unless you're really going to commit to doing this the right way, it's probably helpful to have somebody who has more time or more resources to kind of leverage what they have already. So that's, uh, and 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 these, and these types of, uh, um, I guess, boards or uh, chat rooms or groups where people share uh, scraping knowledge, you said there's there seems to be one or two big ones, but I guess this is this information is kind of all over the place. Is that correct? Yes, actually, it's like everything. So that's why the second step is uh, processing. Yeah. You know, because there is a lot of data, you have to process it. So basically, you're gonna look if you work for BBB, you're gonna work for BBB. But there is a lot of information. I'm just gonna show you another slide. It's how you turn this into a metric. So what do you see here? You see a metric, you see um, a graph. On the left is the price. At the bottom, you know, it's the date. So what is this? It's uh, a scrap, big scraping company and they sell uh, a service. And it's how the, the price of the service changes over time. And what do you see? You see that the price, what the charge to scrape BDB, okay? You see the price uh, was uh, uh, up. And then it was down, 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 down. And in November, there were a lot of changes and the price went up. So what does it mean? It means that the tools, uh, maybe uh, there was protection, you know? So maybe in November, EDD implemented some security changes and then the price, the cost to scrape went up. So it's public data, you know? It's just, 
you look at the price of scraping and the fact that they change many times, it means they were trying to go around. It's a supposition. They were mm -hmm. trying to go around the defenses and they could not. So they had to, you know, or it was more complex. So the price went up. So it could be an indicator indicator of that, the, you know, the fight, you know, is working. So, so that's really interesting. So this slide, just to summarize, so it shows that um, as maybe a, a company puts scraping mitigations or combats online scraping, the price of their data that scrapers get from their site goes up because of the amount of effort it takes to get around those mitigations or um, the availability of the data because of the mitigations or the uh, the way the company is trying to defeat scrapers. Is is that kind of a good summary of this chart or? Exactly, exactly. It's a very good summary. Great, great. Yeah, that's this is very valuable for people to understand the market for scrape data and how it changes based on the, uh, the way companies are trying to fight against uh, unauthorized web scraping. Great, great. And and let's go. Let's move to the next uh, step. So the next step is uh, analysis. Okay. So you have the data. You chose the data that's relevant to your company to BBB, and then analysis. It's where usually you need to have experience. So I took an example. It's a real example from a scra scraping tool. You see on the left, it's a scraping tool, and it says if you look at the first line. Okay, it's going to look at the user feed. So if you are on a social network, it's going to look at the latest news. And the scraping tool is going to scrape the data 10,000 times a day. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean? So it means that if you look, uh, if you are a company, and if you look at all the user actions, if you look at the log, all the, all the accounts that are doing 10,000 times a day, exactly, it means they are robots. So the goal is... It's what we give to. It's what we what we do is we use data, okay, and we try to give uh, actionable intelligence because with this you can go and see your cybersecurity team and say people who do exactly ten thousand a day are robots. Mm. And I always talk about technical, but we also work a lot with the legal departments. And sometimes for tools, we do the same kind of things. We look after uh, businesses, after their tools, we identify them, and we have the same kind of documents for legal departments where we explain, okay, we identified this person uh, doing this. So, so that's really interesting. So in a sense, you can make a fingerprint for a company and say, or, or advise them on what their settings should be to defeat um, scrapers, but yet not make the user experience worse. And exactly. That's that's very helpful. So like, for example, I, I could say, okay, if you see a request limit for this particular function and it hits 10,000, that's probably a scraper and you should exactly. take action against them versus it's... just an end user. Exactly. But how common... Exactly. How common is this information for somebody? What amount of effort does it take to put this together for a company or even for your team? Uh, you probably have to see a lot of different scrapers. You probably have to see what the what what you know the the top and bottom numbers are um, for some of this stuff, right? It takes a lot of time, as I said, because you see it's. I always say on TV, it's the same thing when you see spy movies or police movies. You see the nice thing and, you know, it takes one hour to solve something. But we, as I said, we sifted through a lot of different forums, lots of services, and we check and a lot of time. It's not interesting. You know, it's it's our kind of work. And then you find the interesting thing and you see how you can, uh, you know, uh, communicate with the company to say, this is a problem. Uh, we may have a solution. And as I say, that's why the next step I wanted to show is how to communicate. So usually uh, we communicate, there's three ways we communicate. Uh, there's three levels. Uh, either, sorry, on the, uh, oops, sorry, on the operational level. So it's the direct technical information on the tactical level. So it means uh, something a little bit higher of you are strategic. So it's when you, uh, talk with the um, stakeholders. It's uh, with the management and communication. Don't forget, it's uh, technical teams, uh, legal teams, and other companies. That's why uh, it's important to share. If you find something that could concern everybody, you know, you could share it. 
so so on the slide here you're saying like this is a um uh, this is one of the alerts that your company provides but this will be pretty standard in industry and to let somebody know that um this a particular activity has exceeded a threshold that you've set beforehand and so this this information you communicate to an internal team or and this would be an example of a mitigation because if you don't know that you're being scraped how can you defend against it so I mean, and, and it doesn't act what it comes down to. I mean, in your experience, how many companies even realize they're being scraped and how do they come to you? When do they, you, know, you mentioned at the very beginning of our talk, like you hear from an executive, hey, I found our data somewhere else, do something about it. But is that the typical path or how are companies realizing that they need to set up this kind of a, uh, uh, you know, get this threat intelligence, mm -hmm. do this um, and we'll work yeah. with a company like yours or build their own team? So usually it's in two steps. Uh, usually the you have a website and they realize that data is leaking, that data is being sold and straight. So mm -hmm. the as I told, the first thing they do is they use uh, something for the access. You know, they either they buy your product uh, or they create their own product. But if you go to the you know to the framework. The problem is that there are many steps, uh, and even if you buy uh, a product, some of the products can be bypassed. Mm -hmm. So it's when they realize that they cannot do everything themselves that they come to us because they're like, okay, we have some kind of anti scraping, but they still can do it. Of course, because I'm on the chat with the scrapers, with the high level scrapers, and they discuss every day. They say, oh, this company did something, and then after one week, one of the users is like, okay, I found a way to bypass it. So, you know, it's like a lot of uh, activities in um, IT. It's, uh, you know, it's a competition between, uh, you know, people who want to scrape and the security companies. So that's why this process, you have to be proactive because you know what they're doing and uh, you have to be proactive and listen to what is happening. Because then you can stop them in the tracks. Just like I showed you on a forum where the guy, okay, they found a way to scrape BBB and then it was stopped. So it's a process never ending, but if it's working well, then you can stop, uh, you can mitigate and you can stop some of the flow. Because, you know, to your point, the proactive versus reactive, it really seems that proactive threat management is what you need because once somebody scrapes your site, the data is available for sale somewhere else, right? I mean, that's what it amounts to. There's no getting that back. Um, so it really does require a proactive posture. Is that your experience or? Exactly. And especially now, the problem is for big companies. Uh, the problem is the, there's a lot of things, and but you can get your user data stolen, you can get your business data stolen. And the problem is now there, there are more and more laws. So for companies, it means a lot of money for you know compliance, legal issues, money for litigation and fines. And uh, you know the last time Europe asked uh, USA to pay fines, you know how it ended. <laughs> but yeah, it's a it's a growing problem, and uh, there are more and more legislation. So that's why proactive is very important. Uh, on all of the fields, so on technical, uh, from the user, from legal point of view, just strive to make a difference. So it seems like cyber threat intelligence and and communicating this type of information is a is a crucial part of mitigation. Um, uh, you you would agree with that, or? Yeah, exactly. So that's that's why usually we write to a different person. So as I said, we contact a legal department, technical departments, but also. Uh, the important thing would be if we could uh, do something in Musa to, you know, share what we find. Because actually, uh, what we see is threat actors. Uh, usually, they they don't uh, specif they don't work scrape only one site. Usually, they work on uh, one type of site. People mm -hmm. will uh, scrape all of the social networks. People will specialize in uh, uh, booking websites. So that's why. It could be very beneficial to share the information because we each do uh, work on, you know, on our site. But maybe we could share, and it's very important that you know it's proactive because somebody, if somebody saw a threat coming, you know, you can tell somebody, someone else, and it's very efficient. And so, we're thinking about that and sharing information and some of these other mitigations, how effective are they? Because it seems like 
uh, it's a real cat and mouse game against these, uh, you know, people that are scraping and, and doing this type of activity and chatting about ways to defeat protections or tools that a company may purchase to prevent scraping. Um, but again, how, you know, what would be a good outcome for a company that comes to you or, you know, implement some of this threat intelligence to do something uh, about this kind of a problem? So, of course, uh, as usual, uh, CTI, everything is money. You, everybody is going to ask you about ROI, return on investment. So there are metrics. What usually we have two types of metrics. We have internal metrics and we have external metrics. So internal metrics is if you are BBB, a company, uh, you will see if there is less web scraping, uh, you will see less traffic, uh, you will see be better performance traffic. You know, your servers are going to be less overloaded. Uh, you're going to be less uh, users complaining, uh, less money spent on litigation. And very important also to see the efficiency, you have to measure uh, external metrics. So if you go back and you think about uh, the framework, all the steps is uh, scraping is a, is a chain, you know, they target something, they scrape and they store it. So if you look at different points along the chain, usually what we measure, we measure the big, we measure uh, the price of the tools, okay? Uh, what you can measure also is how effective are the tools. Because as you saw, the tools have, uh, have uh, parameters and the parameters can, uh, can be uh, modified if it's harder to scrape. So basically what we do is we sample different uh, different uh, data at different steps. So we're going to look at the tools. We're going to look at the price of data. You know, it's a very, very good, uh, it's a very good uh, metric is if it's extensive, it's because they have a problem, you know, to scrape it. And that's why. So the tools, if they get more extensive, if they stop working, it's something that if you implement enough changes, the, the you know, the tools are going to break down. So you have along the chain, along the different steps, you measure different things and then you can see. So for some of them, uh, we have like a nice table and you can see, okay, like 30% of the of the tools don't work anymore. Uh, the price went up 25%. And one thing I wanted to add is that now more and more data is behind login, you know, uh, because, the, because of a lot of recent decisions, uh, the data... Uh, you can scrape what's public, it's what uh, people admit. So a lot of things are behind uh, login screens. But actually, there is a market for uh, accounts, you know, to scrape. And you can check the, the price of accounts, you know. So different uh, steps of the scraping chain, you can measure it. And then you can see at the end, every quarter, uh, we, can, we do some kind of report and you say, okay, there was a difference. Well, but just to be clear, right, you said that there's a... a, a a market for accounts to be used for scraping. So it seems that even if stuff is behind a paywall or an account, that there can be scraping within a company behind the, and there's a market for that data too. Is that, is that, as, you know, kind of taking that too far or is that correct? No, it's correct. It's correct. And uh, you see, well, you see, because of the law, uh, you know, a lot of recent decisions uh, said you can claim that you can scrape what's public, but is just creates kind of a rift that uh, in the in the products and what is all but both you know the dark side still exists and there is still a lot of demand and a lot of tools to scrape what's behind pay login world and, and so there's a market for that i mean if people are willing to pay for it i guess people will find a way to do it um that's that's very interesting now what have you seen i know a lot of there's a lot of talk about generative ai and you know just so that everybody is kind of aware of this you know, the, generally what happens is you have a training set and people gather data to create training sets. The training set is used to build a model. And then you have model, that's the output, and that's another place where data is gathered. But for the, um, for for generally for generative AI though, more companies are trying to gather data to build their own models. And so what has that done to scraping and to the value of scraped data on some of these marketplaces? Have you seen it gone up or is it kind of staying static or what, what, what have you seen out in the wild? So I have two things to say about Gen AI. One thing, and it's very interesting, is that you can see some of the scraping companies, the big ones, are uh, pivoting or creating uh, advertising about scraping uh, for 
to create data sets. Like it's interesting. So there, you can see there is a demand and uh, some of the big scraping companies are advertising, okay, you need to create data sets, use our scraping products. And one thing that I wanted to add, uh, David, is a lot of people ask us, you know, with all the LLMs, all the gen AI, like, is, like, well, what's the danger? Like, people are afraid that, you know, they're gonna, there's gonna be a product that can, you can just type, hey, can you scrape this site and every, no. I wanted to tell you, it's not happening. Uh, there is no magic uh, website. Some of products are created and they can scrape uh, sites that are not protected. But we don't see, in the future, there will not be uh, some kind of ma magic uh, genera that will scrape uh, a, a correctly protected website. But what I wanted to say, what we see is, uh, as I said, the, most of the protection is to detect if you are a human or a robot. And the Gen AI are very good at pretending to be human. And we see them, uh, you know, using Gen AI to pretend uh, the way the mouse moves, the way the, the uh, type, everything. They are very good at pretending to be human. They will not scrape magically a website. Don't be worried about this. It's not going to happen. But they are very good at tricking the different systems. As you said, they can solve some of the captures. Now flip it around and say a lot of these um, Gen AI products are publicly accessible. Have you seen any increased instance of people trying to scrape directly from Gen AI platforms to get data? Yes, yes. As I told you, we saw a lot of people are trying even to, you know, they're trying to use uh, some of the products. Uh, they are launching their own products using open, open source Gen AIs. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's there is a lot of discussion, uh, but there is no there is no miracle happening. So I we saw a lot a lot of people trying saying, "Hey, I could scrape a few things," but uh, when if you have good protection, they don't know how to bypass it. So there is a lot of activity, but we see no miracle. There is not there is no product where you can say, "Hey, let's scrape," you know. 5,000 um, profiles. It's not going to happen. People try, but it's it's not going to happen. And, and just, just to, you know, kind of tie back to um, reporting and, and understanding the scraping problem, what are some of the key metrics a company would look at to access, to, to understand the effectiveness of their mitigations um, against yeah. scraping? Oh. Yeah, like I said earlier, or you, you can look at internal metrics, uh, you know, uh, external metrics. So if you're a company, uh, it's, you know, server technical point of view is uh, your bandwidth, you know, okay, how much, you know, how many people are using it, how many requests are sent, uh, and how, f how fast you answer to the requests. Because if you are flooded with requests, of course, uh, the service is going to be bad. So in internal is service level and the External is uh, mostly uh, the price of data, you know, how, for how much your data is being sold. It's one of the most important things, the tools and the, and the data. If you had to, for metrics, it would be inside, uh, internal is uh, the bandwidth, you know, the service to the users, and external, it's how much your data is sold. If it's the price goes up, it means, you know, they have a time to access it. Well, that's, this has been a great talk. I don't know if you have any more slides or can we go back to your first slide? No, it's okay. We can go back to the, we can go to the first, back to the first slide. Back to the first slide. And then I'll just um, wrap this up with, um, as you know, as we end this or conclude this webinar, we hope to leave you with a deeper understanding of how cyber threat intelligence can be a game changer in the realm of scraping mitigation. Thank you for joining Musa and we look forward to your active participation in uh, future webinars and question and answer sessions that we have in the future. And we'd like to, a special thanks again to Morgan for joining us this evening to uh, talk through the tech, more technical aspects of scraping, scraping mitigation and cyber threat intelligence. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Take care.